The AI world just lit up. A decentralized model outperforms giants. NVIDIA drops next-gen hardware. Apple admits series broken and scrambles to rebuild. YouTube trains Gemini to time ads with your emotions. And Floweth unleashes an autonomous agent that builds full projects by itself. From open source RL swarms to real-time monetization triggers, every layer of the AI stack just shifted. Here's everything you missed, compressed, chaotic, and absolutely wild. And let's start with the headline that has every distributed systems nerd grinning. Indelect 2 is out in the wild. Think of a 32 billion parameter reasoning model, but instead of being trained inside one giant data center with synchronized GPUs, it learns through a swarm of permissionless contributors flung all over the globe. The team at Prime Intellect ditched the usual all-to-all -all gradient party and built an asynchronous setup from scratch. Their umbrella framework is called Prime RL, and it splits the work three ways. Rollout generation, model training, and weight broadcasting. The inference workers fire off trajectories, the training nodes chew on gradients, and Shardcast pushes fresh weights across a tree-style HTTP network. So nobody's waiting around for a slow peer. That alone is slick, yet they still had to worry about bad actors, so they invented Toplock. Basically, a locality-sensitive hashing watchdog that spots tampered or low-precision outputs and slashes the contributor on-chain if they're cheating. Inside the training loop, they tweaked the classic GRPO recipe, adding two-sided token probability ratio clipping to keep gradient spikes from nuking the run. They hammered the gradients further with aggressive norm clipping because 32 billion parameters amplify every wobble. Data came from 285,000 math and coding tasks pulled from Numina Math 1.5, Deep Scalar, and their own synthetic one set. Rewards are a binary task success signal, plus a length penalty so you can budget thinking tokens later. And the whole thing is two-step, asynchronous, the policy broadcast overlaps with new rollouts, turning the usual communication bottleneck into background noise. They ran two big experiments. Target short trained with tight answer budgets to build a super efficient reasoner, while target long was the main show with bigger context windows. Throughout both runs, compute stayed busy because comms overlapped, reward curves climbed, length penalties slid, though more slowly than in ablations, on benchmarks, the newcomer edges past QWQ32B on math and code, but gains flatten outside its training distribution. The authors admit they'll need stronger base models like Quinn 3 or richer tasks to push higher. Next on their roadmap, crank the ratio of inference flops to training flops because inference is embarrassingly parallel. Wire in tool calls so the model can fling web searches or Python at problems mid rollout, crowdsource harder RL environments, and finally try model merging via DeLoco to fuse multiple decentralized runs. All the code, weights, and the primarial stack are open source today, so if you've got spare GPUs and a taste for on chain slashing, you're invited. Now, all this talk of asynchronous rollouts makes me think of a platform that turns those rollouts into finished projects. That's why we partnered up with Floweth for this video, because it's a fully visual canvas-based platform where agents don't just respond, they plan, execute, and finish complex tasks completely on their own. Their new Neo agent is actually on another level. It runs in the cloud 24-7, handles over a thousand steps, remembers everything with extended, almost infinite context, and can generate massive outputs, from websites to research papers to automated email sequences. It's the closest thing I've seen to an actual autonomous workforce. And you can literally see the agent thinking, every plan, every step, editable in real time on the canvas. People have already used Flow with Agents to create financial dashboards that track live stock data, daily social media pipelines, 3D tank battle games, AI-generated product landing pages, and even educational simulators. But one that really blew my mind was a 3D pool game. Not a 2D toy, but a real interactive game with realistic lighting, fluid motion, and accurate physics for ball collisions and reflections. Competing agents like Manus and Lovable completely failed the same task. But Floweth's version actually works. Playable, smooth, and visually solid. No code, no tweaking, just AI doing it end to end. And it's not working alone. Neo can create sub-agents, like building a whole team under one command. You can schedule tasks, trigger 
actions based on conditions or run recurring workflows that just operate in the background while you focus on other things. It even works on mobile. Launch tasks, track progress, get results, anytime, anywhere. This thing has already been used to build full apps, automate content creation, design marketing campaigns, and more, all without writing a single line of code. So go check it out. The link's in the description and pinned comment. It's already changing how people work, create, and build with AI. And once you try it, you'll see exactly why. Now, while the open source crowd was busy democratizing model training, Jensen Huang was across the Pacific at Computex in Taipei, home turf for half the world's GPU supply chain, showing why NVIDIA still runs the AI hardware playbook. The 62-year-old walked out in the obligatory leather jacket and, instead of talking speeds and feeds first, opened with what really matters in 2025, friction-free access to compute. DGX Cloud Leptin is the headline. Think of it as an AI GPU marketplace that stitches together spare capacity from CoreWeave, SoftBank, Crusoe, Lambda, Foxconn, Yada, and a bunch of regional providers into one giant planetary scale AI factory. You pick a region, specify how long you need the cards, and Leptin handles the contracts, pooling and scheduling so your agentic workflows never stall waiting for a slot. Wang's pitch? Developers stay in experiment and ship mode, providers keep racks hot 24-7, and nobody has to play container Tetris by hand anymore. NVLink Fusion is the second bombshell. It's basically a design kit that lets cloud builders snap any application-specific accelerator or even third-party CPUs. Qualcomm's AI-tuned Orion parts, Fujitsu's ARM monsters, straight into NVIDIA's rack-scale fabric, same 800 gigabit pipes, same GPU memory coherence, but way more topology freedom. MediaTek, Marvell, Alkip, Cadence, and Astera Labs have already signed on to fab custom silicon that clicks into fusion rigs. So scaling to millions of GPUs, as Huang put it, stops being theoretical. Humanoid Robotics got love too. NVIDIA rolled out Isaac Groot N1.5, a foundation model that runs the high-level brain of bipedal bots on the upcoming Jetson Thor board. New trick, Groot Dreams, a tool that hallucinates training videos from a single still image so the robot can practice tasks grabbing parts, sorting boxes, in synthetic worlds before touching real hardware. Pair that with Groot Mimic, which fattens motion data sets from a handful of human demos, and you get a data flywheel the size of, well, Omniverse. Speaking of Omniverse, Huangden just show can demos Pegatron? Yeah, the $35 billion ODM that builds half the gadgets in your backpack, beamed in to say its Pegaverse digital twin system now cuts new factory build time by 40% and its Vision AI agents trained on NVIDIA's VSS blueprints have slash defect rates on assembly lines by two thirds. That's real AI factory ROI, not a slide deck. On the more traditional GPU front, the next-gen GB300 systems are still on track for quarter three, upgrading the Grace Blackwell rigs that hyperscalers just finished screwing into racks. But the real eye-catcher was the RTX Pro server. Four times H100 throughput on DeepSeek, 1.7 times on MetaLama training, shipping in volume right now. If you're a startup caught between crazy demand curves and multi-month GPU wait lists, Leptin Plus RTX Pro is basically a lifeline. Swinging over to Cupertino, Apple finally admitted that patching old school Siri was a lost cause. Bloomberg's Mark Gurman dug up the backstory. Apple Intelligence, the in-house generative effort, didn't even exist until ChatGPT went viral in late 2022. John Giannandria, their AI chief, straight up doubted people wanted chatbots on phones, so the company skimped on GPUs and tried bolting flashy tricks onto the original rule-based Siri. Engineers called it whack-a-mole. Fix one bug and three more popped up. Lawsuits started flying after the botched rollout of half-baked intelligence features. Now Apple is hitting reset and rebuilding Siri on top of an LLM built from scratch. The goal is a truly conversational assistant that can synthesize info and and for the first time roam the open web the way perplexity does, pulling data from multiple sources rather than choking on a single snippet of Wolfram Alpha or Yelp. Internally, Cupertino is plowing serious money into GPU farms at last. 
because an LLM that runs entirely on device is still science fiction at series scale. The new stack will combine on-device summarization with cloud inference for heavy lifts. German sources say Apple wants a showcase demo by the next iPhone cycle, but the timeline is crazy tight. If they pull it off, the narrative flips from Apple missed the AI wave to Apple ships private on-device AI while everyone else streams your prompts to the cloud. Either way, the team knows the stakes are existential after that messy public faceplant. Finally, YouTube decided mid-roll ads weren't annoying enough, so it's testing a Gemini-powered system called Peak Points. The idea is that Gemini chews through every frame and transcript line, flags moments when viewer engagement peaks, say a proposal, a plot twist, or a crazy speedrun glitch, and then drops an ad immediately after that emotional high. So during Brandcast in New York, they demoed it with a marriage proposal. Ring goes on, crowd cheers, fade out, ad rolls. You still see an ad, but at least it doesn't crash the climax. It's essentially emotion-based targeting. Catch viewers when dopamine is spiking and recall is highest, which sounds great for brands, and potentially for creators who might see higher CPMs. YouTube hasn't said if they also scan for rewinds or watch percentage curves, but the pilots suggest frame analysis and transcript mining do plenty. For advertisers, this means better odds that the spot lands, and for creators, it could nudge revenue up without asking them to manually place mid-roll markers. Viewers, predictably, are split. Some find the timing less jarring because the content beat completed. Others feel emotionally hoodwinked. The feature is still in pilot, rolling to more regions later this year. If it works, expect peak points to become standard and, yeah, other platforms to copy the trick. So here's the question. Should AI be allowed to decide when you see ads based on your emotions? And let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps. Thanks for watching and catch you in the next one.